guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Abisola, but you can call me Azizat. If you are my old subscribers, thank you for stopping by. And if you are seeing my video for the first time, please like, press the notification button when next I drop a new video, you will be notified. I'm a, I'm a Nigerian lady living and working in Oman, Arab country. So today we'll be discussing about some culture shock. I can I say I saw, yes, what shocked me about Arab when I got to Arab. I'm an African lady, so definitely our culture will definitely be different. So what I saw as a shock, that's things that amazed me when I first got to Arab. The first one was their weekend. Okay, in Africa, our weekends are Saturdays and Sundays. But here, their weekends are Friday and Saturdays. So I can remember then if my mom calls me on, on Sunday and she was like a happy weekend, I'll be like weekend. Today is our first working days and they'll be like ah, Sunday. Today should be a resting day. <laughs> so in Arab country, I think it's Arab general. So their weekends are Fridays and Saturdays. And talking about the weekend, another shock, as in another cultural shock I noticed about Arab is that their weekend supposed to be their resting days, as in they should be at home resting because of the work they did for the past five days. But that weekend is a <laughs> family visitation. Is it that you are receiving families or you are going to family house? They always that Fridays and Saturdays is for visitation, visiting one family to the other. If they eat money, uh, money food in, in this family house, the lunch one will not meet them there. They have to go to another family house <laughs> to eat, unlike Africa. <laughs> Your weekend is either for party, uh, doing house chores, or resting. But for you, yeah, their weekends are for visitation. So they love visiting their families. The second cultural shock I noticed about, I saw about Arabos. Can I say Arab have full time table? Or let me say Omani has full time table. Because when I got here, in the morning, during winter, during summer, you must prepare tea. Tea is compulsory. So tea and bread is their like general morning food. Why afternoon is rice? In Nigeria, anything goes. In the morning, you can eat anything, even though if it's rice, anything, swallow, beans, anything. Afternoon, anything you feel like. Night, anything you feel like. But Arab beer is like, maybe, okay, let me say Oman, yeah. It's like they have full time table. <laughs> In the morning, bread and tea, and maybe some local, their local food like fasulia, dill. Sometimes they may prepare egg and their lola. They may have their local food to eat, but that tea and bread is a must. Either you are rich, either you are poor, you are middle class, is a must every day. Why in the afternoon they prepare rice? They have different type of rice, different type of ways of preparing their rice. And at night, is that they eat their native food or snacks? Snacks like pizza, meat pie, sandwich, burger. But in the morning, tea must be in their food and bread. Afternoon is rice. Generally, that is a <laughs> and it's like a cultural shock to me because I can't just imagine a whole country following one timetable. You hardly see a Arab or man in heat rice at night. Maybe when they went for visitation uh, here and they prepared rice. But say a family. Telling the, the other person that ah we are we are eating rice tonight though ah is strange. <laughs> so for me it's like a culture shock because Africans we don't have full time table. Anything goes in the morning, anything you feel like eating in the afternoon, and anything you feel like eating at night. That is the second one. So the third one, the third one is their women. I notice their women don't go to mocks to pray. But in Africa, but wait though. I thought they said we uh, Islam uh, Omani are their as in they are uh, Muslim origin from this uh, Omani side. But Africans, our women do go to mosques to pray. But yeah, women don't go to mosques to pray except male, only male. So their women pray at home inside their room. To me, I was shocked because Africa, our women go to mosques to pray. But yeah. It's not like that. So for me, I see it as a cultural shock when I go to Oman. I'm sorry I'm looking down. I wrote it down because it's so much. And another thing that shocked me again 
let me say their weather. Hmm. Their weather. When it's hot, it's extremely hot. When it's cold, it's too cold. <laughs> it's too cold. When it's cold. Uh, uh, during their summer period, during their summer period, as at 8 a.m. in the morning, my dear sister and brother, you can't use their, their water to base as at 8 a.m. in the morning because it's too hot. When we are talking about hot, this their water is hot. And during the <laughs> during the winter, the weather is extremely cold. So that weather again is another cultural shock because I never even imagined being in a country that is so hot during their summer. But I the they like I've adapted to it. And another thing I notice is their wedding. I don't know. I have numerous questions to ask. I have numerous questions to ask. There are some things that shock me, as in, it shocked me. The first one is, their wedding is at night. Why are they doing wedding at night? Will I say because of their weather? Or they just feel like doing it at night? Because normally wedding is supposed to be during the day. But for Arab, for money, their wedding is at night. I've attended uh, only one wedding since I uh, got to Oman. And another thing that shocked me is that, the groom family have to feed his own people at home. The, yeah, the groom family don't take all his guests to the bride's family. No, they have to do it separate. If I'm from the groom family now, the, uh, the groom have to feed the uh, the groom have to feed his guests. You can't take all your guests to your bride's family. Unlike Africa, if you are getting married, they have to come. The groom have to go to the bride's family with all his family all his guests to go and seek the hand of the bride but yeah it's not like that it's just like the groom and the immediate family that will go at night after feeding all these guests at home in his house so all those people that came to hit that came to for the wedding they won't see the bride because the bride is not in his house it's not in his groom house yet he's still in her house she's still in her house so after eating all of them will just go without seeing the bride. Another thing is that because the one I attended was the group family, there was no activities. There was no activities. Fine, they prepare canopy for the uh, women and the men. They sat on the, they sat, I think, on the field to eat. In the women's family, they were just playing. I can't say it's a music. It's just more of beats. There was nothing. There was no activities. Nothing. All of them, they just came <laughs> to eat. And they left. Okay, they gave the um, the groom parents. They gave them money, like just to appreciate. But they didn't see the wife. The wife is still in her house. After all the eating, after all the eating in the groom's family, then the groom and the immediate family. That this time I think it was around maybe eleven p.m. Eleven p.m. The groom and the immediate family. Then all oh, uh, uh, I think they took like maybe three cars. I can't remember. Then they went to the bride family to go and bring the bride. So for me, I have the most question to ask to ask. One, why are they doing wedding at night? Two, why is there no activities at their wedding? As in, wedding is supposed to be something that uh, at least you go, you have to have fun, uh, play games, you know, some dance. Fine, I know Arab don't don't dance like that, but at least make the wedding fun. For me, oh, their wedding is a very big shock it amazed it amazed me it shocked me it shocked me so my dear brothers and sisters i think for now that is the thing that i can i can remember maybe when i remember remember next thing i will definitely let you know so next, another cultural shock i saw in no man is that anytime a woman gives us to her first child she has to go back to her father's house for like I think maybe 30 days or 40 days. I couldn't remember the days, but she has to spend like up to a month in her father's house after she gave birth to her first child. In Africa, your, if your mother-in-law is around, she can come and assist you. If your own mother is around, she can come and assist you or some extended family. But you don't have to go back to your father's house for days. But here in Oman, it is their culture. For their first child, the boomer have to go back with at least most of her teens to spend some days 
maybe to take care of the child i don't know but yeah that is their culture so for me it's a very big shock <laughs> it's a very big shock and to some of their um women that just got married sometimes in a month they can go more than five times to their parent house if you ask them they'll say they miss their parent sure you've gotten married fine i know you can go to your parent house but not every week every week you got married last week this week you say you want to go and visit your parents <laughs> next week again you will go spend like two days another week you will go almost every week those brides will go back to their parent house all in the name of they miss their parents so in africa fine you can visit your parents even after marriage but it shouldn't be off soon because now you have a new family to grow you have a new family to build another thing i also noticed was that if a woman is living in her mother-in-law's house is the mother-in-law that have to do almost all all the house chores if there is no maid in the house in africa is not like that